Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have an energy facilitator, and it's Jeannie Russell. And I am so excited because I've wanted her on the show for a while now, and she is here. And she's going to tell you a little about herself, what she does, and how she helps people heal themselves mentally, physically, emotionally, and she's been changing lives for the longest time. Now I got her on the show and she's going to tell us all about herself, what she does, and she's going to tell us some stories to go with it. So hang on to your seats because she's going to take you on a ride. So Jeannie, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Hi, I'm Jeannie, Jeannie Russell uh, with Energy Work with Jeannie. I do different energy work. I do body code, emotion code, and now the belief code is out there. Um, I also do Reiki. That's, you know, part of where my energy healing journey began and reached a point where it just wasn't taking me to where I wanted to go. And I found the emotion code and body code. And this is what has taken my journey to the next level of just healing and releasing and, you know, changing lives, you know, my family's lives. And many people along the way so far, it's been awesome. It's, you know, I, I have read the book, The Emotion Code, and I've, I've done research on it. And it's amazing the amount of healing it can do and, and the results people get from it. Now, a lot of people aren't familiar with the emotion code and the body code and, and the belief code. Can you explain what it is and what it does for people? Well, initially, it's like it's a, a whole system. But it's releasing trapped emotions from the body and they they can get lodged in different areas of the body and, you know, they can cause discomfort. Uh, we can have traumas trapped in the body, um, different memories trapped in the body and even inherited stuff that we've brought along from our ancestors that they get trapped and it keeps passing on generation to generation. And we're like, well, why do we feel this way? And, you know. It's like an underlying current yeah. that, you know, this can help get rid of, whether it's in emotions or um, ideas, yeah, beliefs, any of those things can be inherited and can be released throughout the whole family. Right. Like you go back past, present, and future and release it from the creator so the, the family can be free of that. And... um. I just like connect to the subconscious and I ask the subconscious different questions to go. It's actually a whole system, a whole app that you go through to try to find what's going on with the person and to let it go. The bonus with this is you don't have to relive any of the trauma or any of the emotions. You just acknowledge them and let them go, you know, one at a time. I always say like with our heart wall, we have an energetic heart wall that we build up over time. But if we, if everybody had to release that heart wall before they got the driver's license, mm -hmm. wouldn't have any road rage. <laughs> it, yeah. would just, it would just wouldn't be there. So <laughs> <laughs> it, lets, it lets us function better. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know what the heart wall is. So can you explain that to them? Well, sure. Over, over time, it's, it builds up like when we experience something emotional mm -hmm. and we go to protect ourselves. And it does, it protects us from whatever the situation is. Cause I mean, cause you can have a spirit break, yeah, or, you know, like a physical spirit break and it protects you, but it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It never actually goes away by itself, right. you know, cause it's just in protection mode. So what we do is just peel it away and peel it away. I always look at it like it's a filter. Yeah. And as we've, you know, we've made this filter thicker and thicker and thicker, once you start peeling that away, you get to experience emotions for what they are and yeah. not what they are after they come through the filter. Right. So it makes this makes it easier functioning to when you feel an emotion, okay, acknowledge it and then yeah. let it go. And it doesn't have doesn't seem to be so extreme. Yeah. As it is when you have a heart wall. When I you think... experience the emotions anyway. It doesn't seem so extreme. 
And how does someone know that they have emotional blockage? Because a lot of times people don't realize they're like, oh, I have shoulder pain. Oh, this bothers me. That bothers me. But they don't really associate it with the problems emotionally that's going on in their lives. They don't realize that it could be from present trauma. It could be from past trauma. It could be, you know, something they're going through in life that has built up over time. You know, it could be lots of different things. And, you know, someone maybe have an illness and they keep going back to the doctor with the same ailments and it's not getting better or they're getting terrible arm pain. And it could be the weight on their shoulders because so much, you know, there's so much going on in their lives and they can't take it anymore. You know, there's so many different things we could tap into right now. But how does someone really know that they have emotional blockage because I think a lot of times in our society people don't go dive deep enough we do have a, a large community of people that go beyond you know the 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 problem and they they go right into the root of the problem but for people who just like say oh I have shoulder pain and they immediately associate it with some type of illness or problem and and they just run to the doctor can you explain to them that it could be more than just you know a physical ailment maybe they thought they bent the wrong way or they picked up something that was too heavy you know and if they really you dive dive deep in it could be things that are going on in their life that's causing these ailments so yeah can you and, go and it can be very exacting too like a, for instance um as i was you know teaching my family about what i do and this and that my daughter she had picked up a bag of dirt out of the back of her car yeah. and twisted and hurt her back. And she's like, Oh my God, I'm going to have to go to the doctor. And I'm like, honey, I said, once, you, you know, give your mama a chance first. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, but I, I mean, I just did it. It just hurt. You know, it was that quick. I was like, give me, give me 10 minutes. Yeah. And I went in and I did a session on her. And literally by the time I got back out, she's like, well, it's gone. I'm like, I'm telling you, you know, cause it's almost those physical things that your body's trying to tell you something's wrong. I need help. Yeah. You know, and it's not always a medical fix or a physical fix. I think we could cut that out. Yes. By 75, it's probably 70, 75%. Because if we would take care of our, our, our spiritual and our energetic body, it's going to help bring everything else back in line. I mean, yeah. because that's why we hurt because your body's trying to tell you, I need help with this. Right. I need help with this. And it could be that simple. I mean, I've been, my husband's been home and we were cooking dinner and he's like, honey, would you please look at my back? Yeah. It's been killing me today. And that simple, I'm like, all right, you keep cooking. I come back to my little spot and I work on him for just a few minutes. And literally by the time I walk back in the kitchen, he's like, thanks, honey, that feels so much better. And I was mm -hmm. like, it's, it's that quick. And, you know, you could be suffering with things for years and years and well, this, there's no way that that could fix it. And it's like, well, I mean, you don't know until you try. Yeah. And once you try, you're going to be like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this really does help. <laughs> so it's very exciting how, I mean, I just think it's the wave of the future of us truly taking care of our whole self. Yeah you know, and not just, not just the physical body or just the spiritual body. You have to get the energetics in there too. Cause once you give the body the correct placement yeah. and area, it can heal itself. Right. I mean, that's what I do. I'm not the healer. Yeah. You're the healer. Right. I'm just facilitating and getting you to where you need to be so you can heal. Yeah. I, you know, can you explain to people like some of the, the, the procedures you do and some of the techniques you do? Because I, you know, people you need to understand, you know, the things that go on when you do emotional, you know, you know, um, when like techniques to un unblock the emotions or uh, different techniques to help, you know, do, to help in certain areas. So can you go dive deep a little, you know, uh, what you do and how it works? Well, I'm, what I'm doing is muscle testing. I'm getting answers from your subconscious and letting it guide me and tell me what, you know, it, you know what you need or your subconscious knows what you need. Yeah. So that's who I'm asking the questions for. Um, a lot of times if we could just like during the day, if you do it like once or twice and acknowledge an emotion, yeah, you know, if you're feeling, oh, I'm feeling hopeful or I'm feeling 
uh, sad or whatever that emotion is, literally just saying it to yourself is acknowledging it and it'll be able to release when you're done. Right. And, you know, a lot of times we don't even bother to do that. We just feel it and go, you know, just tuck it right back down. And, yeah. you know, that little tucking part is why we end up with them all over our body. Right. You know, it could be anywhere from your big toe to, you know, your skull brain. Right. And it gets into the different ones and it's very, very small adjustments. Yeah. But it can make it the world of difference, like with headaches and um, back aches, you know, any kind of pain or yeah. healing. even if you've gone and had surgery, your, your, your body takes it as a trauma. Yeah. You know, whether I know, you, you know, you may physically not feel like it was a trauma, but your body does. Yeah. So you have broken into that area and it wants, you know, to release and feel better. So, but one of the things that I've worked, you know, just showing how the trauma affects the body as I was working with a young man, he was probably about nine years old and he had a reoccurring sickness. I mean, every probably four to six weeks, it was the same sickness for about 36 hours, fever, throwing up, da, da, da. And the doctor was just at his wits end. He's like, I'm just going to send you to an infectious disease specialist because I don't know how to fix you. Yeah. And well, luckily his mom was open enough and she came to me and like, can you just check this out for yeah. us? And it was a trauma. Now it wasn't, it wasn't his trauma, right? But it was the trauma that he witnessed. Yeah. And it manifested in his body. And once that we released, because you have to get the trauma or find the trauma, and then you got you got to get everything behind it, yeah. you know, everything that's holding that trauma in place. Right. So once you release all that and you can release the trauma, you know, he didn't get sick anymore because of that. Right. That's how it was manifested in his body. And his body was like, oh, this has got to go. Yeah. Or it can keep you from healing. You know, one of the around the same trauma, it was like. A, a, a pinky bone that mm -hmm. would that just wouldn't heal it couldn't touch right. anything you know it was just not healing and this was almost two years later and it was yeah. still not healing but once we got in and released the trauma yeah from that situation that it started to heal wow. it, has, it has like a recovery interference yeah 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 if you get rid of that then okay, okay, I'll heal now. You know, I just needed you to do your work first and then I'll get on, you know, I'll get busy and do my work. <laughs> <laughs> no, body, awesome. it tries to tell us. Yeah. So can you explain like the procedure? So like, let's say someone comes to you and they say, like you mentioned, oh, I have, you know, I get this reoccurrent illness and it keeps, you know, it gets better. Then it comes back a couple of weeks later and it just doesn't go away. So then for you, what would you do? Like what so initially, basically I pray in and ask to connect to their subconscious and I ask for divine help. And then I'll go through what is called the body code and it'll take us and tell us whether it's energetic and then it'll tell us whether it's a misalignment or it's a needs reset or if there's trapped emotions and you go all the way through to find everything that's causing it. It could be, um, any bone, any muscle, any meridian chakra. I mean, you name it, it covers every single system in the body. So we find, you know, your body is telling me where to go to find, you know, because I muscle test through the whole thing of yes or no's, yes or no's, yes or no's to find, you know, what it is that we need to find in order to be able to release it. Right. Now, when you, when you're doing it, so do you, is it something that inside of you spiritually that is guiding you? Or is it when you're doing the muscle testing, you, you can feel where the blockage is and then you know how to go about healing that blockage. Like, it's it's actually, it's their subconscious. It's their subconscious. Answer, answering. So what I do is I, I, I get in and I ask a proxy for them because okay. I work on people like my second big, biggest client base is in Australia. Mm-hmm over America. So, I mean, it literally, it works everywhere. Yeah, of <laughs> It course. doesn't matter. We don't have to be face to face to make it work. Yeah. But connecting with them energetically. So like, I'll be like, I've had it where I've 
working on somebody and I'm just asking their body questions. So I'm like, am I, am I Stacy, you know, or am I Jeannie, you know, it's going to tell me no, but I ask that all the way through the system and try to find, you know, what it is they're getting. So they're really giving me all the answers. Yeah. It's just a matter of connecting up and then being open. And then when we're all done, we just release the whole thing <laughs> and let it go. I mean, sometimes there's a little processing in there. Yeah. Well, anywhere from my day, I've had it as high as 14 days, but, um, and that's the first time is usually the longest because your body is like, okay, it's learning how to do this and take it and be able to release everything. Yeah. And, but it can be short and sweet. So it, it gets shorter as you go, just because your body is learning what yeah. to do with the emotions. So as it learns, it learns to process itself, I think. So as you're guiding them and you're directing them and you're finding out where the blockage is and you're finding out where the problem lies, then for the client, wh what is their responsibility to help release that emotions? Well, I'm releasing them as mm -hmm. we go. I see. I oh, like during the process and time, it's always like drink extra water, move the body. Um, if you have like 10 to 15 percent have like seems to be like a severe emotional reaction mm -hmm. you know if you can ground barefooted you could touch a tree it trades the positive and the negatives with you yeah. so it'll help you release it faster so those are like the things i recommend during processing time yeah. just to make things go smoother because your body knows what to do it's just uh it's learning right exactly. how to do it and, and you know just like us stretching and moving helps move this stuff through our system easier. Right. Now, can you share some stories about others, like different situations, how remarkable, you know, the, the emotion code and how the belief code and, and, and all the, the, these procedures that you do to help people actually release these negative emotions and, and to help them release the issues that they're going through, like, you know, how powerful it could be, you know, through other experiences that you've had with clients. Well, what I, one of the most amazing ones to me was with, with my husband and he is a firefighter paramedic and he has dealt with a lot of unbelievable stuff through the years, Yeah, but there was one that just stuck hard and, and it always sticks harder when it's a child. Yeah. But, I mean, he just literally couldn't think about that situation without getting upset or crying. And I mean, that's not my big firefighter guy. <laughs> But it, it, I mean, it was just so horrific. Right. We did a session to, to remove that, but it's like, a, it's a memory field that gets stuck, Yeah. you know, in the body and you have to go in behind that memory field and release the traumas and the emotions. So it doesn't take away the memory, but it takes away the charges. Yeah. So you can think of something and not have that charge of the emotions coming after you. Yeah. And it just helps you function better. I mean, because, you know, especially in the, that kind of work. Oh with, yeah. With a hundred percent dismay every day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it affects their bodies and they just don't, they don't realize it. Oh yeah. I used to be a reporter and I, I wrote for a veterans magazine and some of these veterans that I interviewed, the, the things they had to witness were horrific and it, it, you know, it carried through their entire life because you could witness one traumatic event and that could stick with you your entire life and it could cause trauma and it could cause things in, inside of you that you didn't even realize, but yes. you know, it really could, it could take a toll on your mind and body. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the, the ideal behind it is that you don't have to relive it Yeah. in order to release it. All we got to do is, you know, find it, Yeah. get what's behind it. Anything right. that's, you know, anything that kind of holds it in place and holds it in your system. So you yeah. get everything behind it and then, you know, your body is able to release and heal and it just makes such a great difference. Um, and the other one that, that I work on is the belief code and it's been out since October. I think mm -hmm. it took about seven years to 
pull it together. Right. But that one works on like negative beliefs and limiting beliefs, faulty core beliefs and faulty core identities. Wow. It is crazy how much we're being programmed constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not worthy. You're not good enough. You're ugly. Yes. You're fat. You know, all of that stuff gets beaten to us. And I have done the sessions on myself and I've done it on the outside too, but just releasing that unworthiness yeah, that has gets pounded into you through your whole life. Mm -hmm. Like the first time you're free, you're like, oh, I can breathe. <laughs> you know, you don't yeah. have because even with the like these emotional systems, you don't realize what you're holding on to till you actually let it go. Oh, for sure. Then you're yeah. like, oh God. You breathe again. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the heart wall thing. Yeah. If I if everybody had to get rid of their heart wall before they got the driver's license, then we wouldn't have any road rage. Right. You know, because exactly. every it just things are not so extreme. Exactly. Exactly. We pick up a lot as teenagers because I mean I remember as a teenager everything was the end of the world. Yeah. Oh, sure. tomorrow's never coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ruined for life. Yeah. You know? And all that stuff sticks in their bodies. Oh, for sure. So, yeah. You know, even though older, we don't think it's extreme. They do because we yeah. work. On, I work on even little ones. Mm -hmm. work on my grandbabies and. It's amazing because you can bring things in with you. Yes. Like preconceived ideas, preconceived emotions. Yeah. And, you know, trying to, you know, because my daughter's like, what is going, what is going on with this boy? I don't understand. I'm like, yeah, I'll get on it. And it was, it was like preconceived this, preconceived that, preconceived. And I'm like, yeah, he just brought all his junk with him for this trip. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on getting him better in no time. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it's funny you say that because, you know, I've talked to like people, you know, and, and clients that were in college and they bring up things from elementary school. Like it sticks with them. Like, you know, and if you think about it, I've dealt with, um, I've dealt with adults, you know, even in their sixties and seventies, and they're still talking about their high school years. You know, it just sticks with them or the birthday party when they were seven years old and, you know, only five people showed up, you know, and they invited 20, you know, and it sticks with them. And, and, it, and, and it's crazy how, People, you know, have these emotions and they're repressed, you know, and we came from a society, don't forget that it was like, you know, it was like, you know, especially men, it was like, be tough, you know, you can't, you can't share your emotions, you're not allowed to cry, you know, and, you know, and women had to be the rock of the house and hold up everything. And, you know, so it was like a generation of, you know, you can't show your real emotions, you can't tell people how you feel. If something's going wrong, you know, suck it up, suck it up. You know, so then all of a sudden you become, as you're getting older, you have all these things built inside. And that's why the whole world is effed up. You know? <laughs> yeah, because we repressed it for way too long. Yeah. I mean, we just have to let go. Yeah. I mean, let go. And it's not, that's what I love about this is you don't have to relive right. the things that happened. Yes. Like it comes up, like if a trauma comes up. I'm mm -hmm. going to ask the age. Yes. And I'm going to ask, you know, wh wherever that age is. Yeah. And sometimes it, it hits, you know, and you remember. Yeah. As you like what comes behind it, whether yeah. it's security or humiliation or, you know, whatever those emotions are that are behind it. Yeah. Kind of rings the bell for what actually happened. Yes. You know, during that trauma. And yeah. sometimes if it doesn't, hit with you you know like the eight i don't know you know i'll literally have people write back to like i figured out what you were talking about and i cannot believe that was still there yeah but i mean it is our body just doesn't let go that easy yeah. you know because your subconscious forgets nothing right there's everything and holds on to everything yes so all we got to do is just find it and release it and we we'll, as you do it you just get better at it Right. But we don't hold on to that and keep going on. So, so when you, when you're doing that, so 
when you're working with clients and they're releasing these negative emotions and they're starting to feel better now, is it once they release these emotions, is it a, an immediate release where they start to like change immediately? They see a, like a, a really vast change or is it baby steps where this is going to take time and you're going to feel a little better today. And then as you keep practicing it, you're going to feel better and better and better because some people expect immediate change. And some people realize that, you know, things have to happen in baby steps. So when you're doing the emotional code and you're doing, you're doing all these different things that you had just mentioned, like the belief code, and you're practicing these different, different ways of releasing negative emotions inside us, what's the process of healing the time frames? It really, it depends on the person Okay, and how they have to be open to do this, you know, ready to heal you know, because they are the ones doing the healing. All I'm doing is the facilitating. Yes. But they have to energetically um, having a brain cramp. <laughs> okay. We all have them. <laughs> oh, so just getting, um, finding all of the emotions and they will get, like some people get immediate relief, mm -hmm. like me working on my husband. I literally was back here. And by the time I got back to the kitchen, he was already feeling better. Yeah. Sometimes the body wants to bring forth what it thinks is the most important. Mm -hmm. Now, usually it wants to show you that it works. Yeah. It will bring up something it can release. So the body can show you, okay, I like this work. Let's do this work and get more released. And sometimes it wants to show, like it doesn't necessarily go for the biggest thing first. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't want to scare you, if I that makes you. sense. Yes, it so does. It's going to let you get rid of some stuff. But, you know, like the first time, it's not always the biggest thing because it doesn't want to scare you away. Right doing the work yeah if that makes sense no it does make sense so when someone works with you and they're 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 working on healing themselves is it good is there a certain way they should prepare before they start the process with you is it good to make maybe a list you know and try to un understand what they're going through or is that is is it's hard for people to do that some, for, I no guess. i mean they don't they don't really have to do anything other than just be open okay and, and be open to healing be open to receiving i yeah. mean because our bodies are meant to heal themselves we aren't meant to be bogged down like we are or medicated like we are yeah. we're not supposed to be that way i mean yeah. it's it's supposed to be a natural healing system yeah. so it it will do the work we just got to give it the right things the right tools to work with right and does that Help. Oh, that makes sense. It makes sense to me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a process where you work with the person, everyone's at a different speed capacity, depending on how they absorb the information and how they're able to deal with the information. So as we go along, some people might have a, a faster healing process because they can absorb it and they can, it can transmit faster where other people might've actually gone through more trauma or they, they just have a hard time connecting with their emotions. So they might have to go through several sessions or more sessions and yeah. they get a little bit of healing, you know, mm -hmm. at a little bit at each time well where what i've seen is like once you get rid of so much you take you know not just your processing time but more processing time of functioning yeah and your body will say okay here's that other thing you were looking for you know and yeah then this other thing's gonna come up and right. say okay you did good here. So here you go. Let's let, let's let this one go too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but I mean, it, your body, it just wants to heal. And you know, all this heal. does is help it Yeah. process. And you just, I mean, usually like the heart wall, usually you literally physically feel lighter in the chest, just getting rid of all of that off of you. I mean, because right. that too can be inherited. It can be preconceived or you can absorb them from yeah. people. Right. Especially like if you're really empathetic and you want to 
try to make everybody feel better. You literally pull that off of them and take it onto yourself. Yeah. You can take things on that aren't even yours. Right. And, you know, you don't do yourself any favors. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. When I would do like Reiki, I would do, I would help friends of mine and, and I would do sessions with them. And some of them were going through a lot of trauma and afterwards I literally felt drained like a vacuum. And then, you know, another friend would say, oh, can you do it on me? And I'm like, can't do it anymore because it, you you do feel that drained feeling. If someone's going through a lot of trauma, we, you know, our whole world is made of energy. So, you know, you could feel the other, you absorb the other person's energy. So if someone has a lot of negativity and they're going through a lot of stuff and let's say you're a positive person and you're giving them your positivity, and then you're, you're, as you're pulling out their negativity, uh, I think it's normal for, you know, you're starting to feel drained because that energy. Well, is- you have to protect yourself yes. from that. Because when I do Reiki, like I'll give you, for instance, I kind of let my guard down because it was my own child I was working yeah, yeah. on. And, you know, I wasn't as diligent as I am with the yeah, client. Right. But ended up by the time I got done doing Reiki on her, I was in tears. Yeah. Just boohooing. Yeah. And she's like, well, welcome to my world. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it was so terrible. Yeah. But you do have to protect yourself. Yes. Anytime you're doing energy work. Exactly. So it, you know, it doesn't come into you because like I'll swoosh it out the window. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Go mm-hmm. transmute into something beautiful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, because there can be all kinds of, I mean, this finds courtings. Mm -hmm. It can find entities, it can find curses. Yeah. Because people, they can curse you. And it's not like a the witch thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's intention. You know, they just have that foul intention to you. It actually it'll come and attach to you as a curse. Right. You know, it's not always it's just intention. Like everything we need to do or do is intention and you know, you have to have that very directed, but they're really awesome to get rid of. Yeah. Especially courtings. A lot of time with like old relationships and stuff like that. If you still feel yourself going back to that person, those courtings drain you. Yeah. In that direction. Yeah. So yeah. you got to get out there and cut that cord and Let separate. Go. Yeah. <laughs> so they both feel free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Now you said there's three types. So you have the, you have the emotional code, we have the belief code and you mentioned the body code, correct? Yes. And so tell me a little about the body code. Okay. Well, I'll go, I'll start with the, the emotion code because that's the basis, the of, basis it. of it. Yes. Yeah. So when I do the emotion code, it's, we all, I always start with a heart ball with whatever I'm doing to make sure Because I think that's just the most important thing to get rid of. Yes. To help you feel your feelings for what they are. Mm -hmm. And then I just start, I start releasing as much as it will let me. Yeah. In a session, because your body knows what it's going to let go of. Yeah. Because we kind of communicate subconsciously Mm -hmm. and it it will let go like usually like eight to 12 emotions. And then I'll release just regular emotions in general until the body says, okay, this is all we can do. This is it. This is it. This is it. Yeah. You know, and then I give you your process and time and then yes. we go. And that only takes, you know, 20, 25 minutes. Right. You know, then you're off and on your way. The mm-hmm. body code is, is more in depth where it gets into finding all the specifics, whether yeah. it's, in, whether it's in a bone or a muscle or a disc or a, yeah. Vertebrae, you know, anywhere in the body, the big toe, it yeah. doesn't matter, but it goes and it finds everything specifically related to an issue. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. Um, then the belief code, that one, now that's not one that I would actually start with because it's, you've got to really, you got to be ready for this one. Yeah. But you find all of the negative beliefs, you find all of the limiting beliefs, all of the core beliefs you know and those are like from zero to seven yeah and pounded in our little heads you're right all the identities and then you have to go release any emotions attached to that yeah. you have to go release any kind of misalignments or allergies you know ideal allergies yeah release everything behind it in order to go back and release the belief code right 
or the belief right. system. And those can be quite complicated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So if you wanted to take everything that we learned today and you wanted to kind of um, summarize some important things and you want to kind of emphasize on things that you wanted people to understand, what would you want to tell the listeners from everything we talked about today? To take care of your, all three bodies that you have, you yeah. know, take care of your physical body, your spiritual body, but in your energetic body. Yeah. Um, anything that affects your physical body is going to affect your energy body. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you're in person or you're halfway around the world. It yeah. works. And even, you know, time is not linear. Yeah. So that's why we can go and we can release like old inherited emotions. Yeah. You know, had a, as much as 25 generations. Right. That they have passed forward. You know, that's not average, but, you know. Yeah. We can be holding these things in our families for a very long time. And it's, it's just beautiful. I yeah. love, absolutely love, love, love what I do and just want the word out there Yeah, you know, to heal. It's yeah. time to heal. Definitely time to heal. It is. You know, I, a question popped in my head as you were talking. When something happens, let's say for generations and it's been, you know, going on for a long time, how do people come to realization that that's actually the problem? If it's, if it's something that maybe just kind of connected with them through, you know, past generations, you know, how do people absorb and, and understand, wow, this is the cause when it's, it started so long ago? Well, they can usually feel like an undercurrent mm -hmm. to their life in some sort of yeah morality, whether it's unworthiness or, I mean, insecurity mm -hmm. or, you know, even depression, right? These things, when they're so extreme for that person in that moment, yeah. it, it, it hooks in, you know, to like the DNA yeah. and that's what yeah. passes it on. And it seems like every time that you find an inherited one, yeah, recognize the undertone to yeah. their, you know, this wasn't my life, right. but I can still feel it in my life. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times I see like inherited ones, like when they get in an organ. Yeah. Or something like that. And I have, I ask, and it's like, do you have like issues with this that run through your family? And probably seven out of 10 say, oh, yeah, we've had lots of lung issues or we've had lots of this or that. And it's because of that inherited stuff has been trapped in that same spot for each yeah. generation. And that's how it's manifesting. Right. So, I mean, like my husband, like all the men we know of have died of pancreatic cancer, mm -hmm. but guess where I found inherited emotions on him. So, I mean, that's kind of how I think it flows. I mean, yeah. I don't know if there's any backed up data to that, but I'm just, yeah. I just like to watch it in my own with my own clients and think, yeah. oh, that's so cool. Yeah. You know, we can be done with that stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, oh. let's save our kids. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Save our kids and our grandkids from taking on that mess. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Now, yeah. what are the services that you offer? All the different services? Because you have a whole bunch of things on your on your site and you've talked about certain things. Yeah, well, emotion code is the one I do. And then I do the body code mm -hmm. and then belief code. But then I do like a mixture of one where I do an emotion code with a Reiki session. Yeah. And it has a tendency to like cut your processing time in half. Yeah. Um, Like during processing, I ask people not to do other energy work. Right. You know, so they don't dump it on somebody unsuspecting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not really fair yeah <laughs> but I do I do one where I do the emotion code and then I do the Reiki session to help the processing move along faster right um, but I do animal code too is where I do all these same things for animals yeah I go for instance I had my horse she wouldn't come out of the barn mm -hmm. for like two months I'm like girl wow. what's wrong with you yeah you know, I know the weather's not great but at least you should get out and move around <laughs> yeah then it can, I'm like well, what do I do? <laughs> I do a <laughs> session on her and in her, she had a heart wall of um, uselessness. She's like, she was useless, Aww. worthless. And I'm like, well, she's like 28. 
-hmm. And, you know, like when I took that away from her within the 24 hours, she's been back out walking around the pastures and moving. Wow. You know, that kind of hit her to where, oh, I'm old and I'm nothing but a a (laughs) mower anymore. And, Uh uh, (laughs) <laughs> and her feelings were hurt, but once we released it, then she's out yeah. and moving around again. So the animal code is another one that I, I do out there. Oh, just that's amazing. Help our friends. Yeah. Cause I had one that if, if I would have had this in my toolbox, yeah. I had a dog I had to put down and yeah, and had this, that wouldn't have happened. Right. So, you know. We can change their lives for the better too. hundred <laughs> oh, yeah. percent. I definitely believe that. Yes. Yeah. But I do do like a 15 minute session. If you don't know what to pick, it's called new beginnings. Yeah. There's no charge. And if you need help trying to figure out what to do, we just talk through it and I'll push you in the, in the right direction. Right. Yeah. You know, Cause if you're suffering with pain, that issue, I would definitely go for the body code. Yeah. But the emotion code is just general and to start the healing journey. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. Now, where can people find you? I am at energyworkwithgenie.com and it's J-E-A-N-N-E. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. I hope to have you back on the show so we could dive deeper into a lot of, you know, maybe one day talk about just the emotional code and then one day go into the body code and then one day really go into, you know, the belief code and really dive deep into this. Yeah, I mean, because you you have beliefs on money, on relationships, on, I mean, it's just, it's endless. It's endless, yeah. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Anything that comes to your mind that you maybe want to share with the listeners before we go? Nothing to jumping out at me, but I, right. do, I do appreciate you having me. Oh, I appreciate you coming on the show. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much. You gave us a whirlwind information. I happen to love the emotional code, the body code. And now that you've opened up the belief code and you were talking about, you know, how you could work with animals also, this is amazing. And, you know, I think people have to- It's the future. It is the future because, you know, people have to realize that, you know, they think that, okay, something's not right. I have an ache. I have a pain. You know, I feel tension or, you know, maybe I'm gaining weight. They don't realize the cortisol level could be going up because of stress. You know, where is that stress coming from? Let's go to the root cause and let's figure out, you know, what the problem is because, you know, it's not always can't jump and take a pill. That's not going to help. You have to really go to the root cause. What is the root cause? And then find out how to fix it. And I always, I say this on so many shows, 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. You know, if we think about that, you know, life is stressful. You know, the things we go through, you know, things that may have happened, like we were talking about when people were kids or just growing up and, and, and seeing something traumatic, you know. It's, it's more than, you know, than, than thinking, oh yeah, it's normal to get sick. You know, what is causing it? You know, (laughs) it's not, you know, (laughs) no, you know, and let's think of the root cause and let's think about how we could actually go into it naturally and really think about what is causing this, you know, and, and try more natural approaches and let go of that negativity because the world is made of energy. If we had no energy, we'd have no world. We are made of energy. We wouldn't be here if there wasn't energy. The trees, the grass, everything, the oxygen. So let's go to the resource. You know, the main the main thing that's keeping us, you know, alive is our energies and make sure they're in alignment and let's get that negativity out because we really people have to go beyond, you know, the gray box and really think about this in a deeper level. And you know, what you do could actually change lives. So I'm, I'm glad you came onto the show. Yes. <laughs> you know? Especially mine. It's just beautiful. Yeah. I used to just be an office worker. I used to work and off manage the office. And I had one of my clients write me and just told me that it changed her whole life. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't, I can't push paperwork no more. Right. Yeah. So, but you have a chance to, help people and change their lives completely. I mean, yeah, a hundred percent, you know, it's like, you know, I think changing someone's life is, is such a humongous, 
It's the best feeling in the world. And, you know, if you could change one person's life in your entire life, you've done something amazing, you know, and people have to realize that. And people can change their own lives with guidance of others, you know. So, you know, people like you are, are an amazing contribution to this world because, you know, you help people see things in a different light and you help people release things that have been taunting them for years and years and years. And you can just, you know, change someone's life in, in you know, one session, three sessions, five sessions, whatever it takes, depending on the person. But you have that people have the opportunity to change their lives. So why not try, you know, right. let's make it let's do it the easy way. Let's do it for the change. easy way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh my God, this has been amazing, Jeannie. I, I'm so glad you came on this show. Thank you so much for your time. And I Thank hope to see you, you soon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Have you. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.